Reasons why. As we've been discussing sexualization, it might be a natural question to ask, why would anyone do this, <laughs> okay? It's the questions many women have asked me over decades from many countries. Why does he look, lust, flirt, groom, porn, cheat, all this stuff, Dr. Weiss, why does he do this? It doesn't make any sense to me. In this session, I wanna go through a few reasons. Thousands of men have told me why they sexualize other people and why this poor behavior is in their life. Now, I'm not making excuses for anyone. I started this tape with taking full responsibility. I do, however, want to acknowledge that there are things that the soul has to manage and sometimes chooses sexualization and fantasy and pornography as a way to medicate, not justifying it in any way or minimizing the responsibility. I think I've been pretty strong on this so far, but I want to also be compassionate. And many things I'm talking about, I've been through. I had to work through and me working through them freed my soul enough to not need to be medicated, to not want to medicate, to not want to lust, to not need uh, someone's affirmation that I'm okay, whether it was fantasy, image, or real. So let's talk about these. And we're going to go through these relatively quickly, but I want to acknowledge and validate these, okay? Abuse, number one. That could be physical abuse, being hit, emotional abuse, being um, told you're not good enough, or even worse, emotional neglect, not having your dad say anything to you. A lot of men I work with have a dad wound, and it's not the beat up in your awful dad, it's the, he wasn't there. He didn't show up. He didn't teach me anything, dad. Okay, sexual abuse. Definitely, if you've been sexually abused, 80% of the people who have sexual addictions are sexual abuse survivors. And so they were sexualized and they continue to sexualize themselves and others as a way of coping. Number two, we talked about conditioning, the sex in the brain piece we talked about. Number three, sexual addiction. This is where the person actually hijacks the sexual template and attaches it to an image or a thing through the high amount of repetition. And actually their sexuality connects to that. Their sexuality actually connects to that and draws them to want to do that again and again and again, okay? Number four, medicating. This can be a past issue or a present issue, uh, dealing with stress in their lives, not being emotionally mature enough to deal with stuff. And so they use sexualization, they use acting out as a way of, of coping. Number five, escaping. Just purely escaping the responsibility of life. Instead of stopping at the bar and having a beer, they go cruise and look for someone to look at. They stop at a place to get some attention. They uh, go into porn or fantasy or they use their cell phone and they get into all kinds of Facebook stuff. And just let's just be really honest, all that Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and all the future social medias, most of them are porn stores. You just have to be straight up honest about that. But they'll escape into those things. Number six, compensating. It is common for a man to, if he feels inadequate, to create a world where he is adequate. And most of this is fantasy, where the other person loves, wants, adores, worships them, and thinks they're great without having to do anything to actually earn that. So they compensate. Number seven, false connection. Because of their lack of intimacy in the real world, they find it easier to have intimacy with an object world, a fantasy world, a porn world, okay, a world that doesn't exist. Because there's no risk. There's no being called out. There's no being called up. Okay, there's no accountability in that world as there would be in an intimate relationship with a real person. Number eight is sexual neglect. And I kind of separated this because in the Christian world, this is way more common than sexual abuse. It's where we don't teach our kids anything about their bodies, anything about sexuality. You know, just recently I had a, a, a very famous pastor's son in my office and he's like, my dad didn't say anything about sex. And, and, and this is sad, but that sexual neglect, you know, his response to that is I had to find everything out myself. So I had to find out from my friends and pornography and stuff like that. And this is what caused his sexualizing process that actually hurt him in the future. Number nine is intimacy anorexia. This is where someone is 
not connecting to their spouse. They're withholding spiritual, emotional, sexual intimacy. They're too busy. They blame. They withhold love, praise, sex, spiritually. They use anger and silence as a way to control. This person has intimacy and anorexia, and oftentimes they are using the sexualized world as a way to escape, okay, because they're not doing the intimacy work with their spouse. They're not connecting. So that could also be something that could start and maintain a sexualizing lifestyle. Now, any one or any combination of these can be a reason uh, that starts the sexualization or maintains the sexualization lifestyle. Also, any one of these uh, can be healed. And I haven't even talked about the, the, you know, the mood disorders like depression or bipolar or someone who actually is medicating a physiological issue with sexualizing our sexual behaviors. And this can be a, another reason that uh, instigates or is maintaining that process. And if that is so, that can also be healed. And it's really important that when you're talking to someone about this and you're going to a counselor and a Christian counselor, uh, let me be straight up honest. Most of them have zero training in sexual addiction, sex, in, in, in these issues, uh, even though they say on their website, they, they deal with this. See if they're certified by someone. A lot of our counselors are certified through ASAT, AASAT.org. Those people have really been trained through this stuff, okay? Don't go to someone who just kind of does this on the side, but they deal with all kinds of other stuff. You want someone who specializes in this to get some healing from. So I would encourage you if you're gonna go through that process to do that. But these are some of the reasons and any of them can be healed.